So yeah, this talk is about how to do GStreamer on uh, tiny devices. Um, so first question, who am I? My name is Olivier Kreit. I've been working on GStreamer at Collabra since 2007. Uh, at first I spent a couple of years doing video calls, mostly the, the part with audio and video using GStreamer. I built a framework called uh, Farstream, which is a series of GStreamer elements to do video calls. Uh, for protocols like SIP, XMPP. As these kind of got out of fashion, I moved onto um, more generic GStreamer for all kinds of devices, all kinds of industries, from TV set the boxes, but also very, very small devices. Um, and some of these, you would think GStreamer is, is a big framework, it's a big PC thing, it will never fit in my device. So what kind of device am I talking about when I say a tiny device? It's a device with not much flash storage, probably a relatively slow CPU, and not that much RAM. By not much flash storage, I mean just maybe a couple megabytes of, of space for the application. Um, but first, I'll give a little overview of GStreamer. So who in this room knows what GStreamer is? Have some hands? Oh, all right, let's make a quick overview. <laughs> um, so a GStreamer is a multimedia framework to build applications that process things like audio and video, probably in a way that's synchronized. Uh, there's a core framework which doesn't know anything about audio or video and just processes timed data in a, in a pipeline manner. And this uses a bunch of different plugins that implement different functionalities, different protocols that are underneath. And it has a very simple API uh, with not that many entry points that is used by applications on top. Uh, some of them are built in GST launch, GST inspect, but most of them are obviously the user's applications. The plugins, there are a bunch that are included, but there are also some third party ones that either people write their own applications that, that come from the hardware vendor or uh, that they get from other places on the internet. So GStreamer is about pipelines, as I mentioned. Uh, pipeline is a source which produces data, it has a sync element which consumes it, and it has filters that uh, uh, take it on one side and push it out on the other side. Um, the elements are connected using pads, source sync pads, that source pads produce data and data is consumed by sync pads. So this is a bit inspired by uh, electrical systems or by other uh, similar frameworks. Um, so in applications, GStreamer, as I said, there's not that many entry points. They have basically only four types of entry points. There is methods, events, and queries, which go from the application to the framework. Um, events are shoot, and then you will get your reply from somewhere else, or, or maybe not. Queries, you get the, the blocking, and you wait for a reply from them. And messages are messages that come from the framework from the pipeline to the application. They can be spontaneous because they tell you about some event that just is unpredictable, or they can happen as a reply to an action that you've taken. So for example, there's a message that says async done that happens once you've done an asynchronous day state change. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so GCWare is perfect for embedded. It has, it's a completely zero copy. We have a lot of different tools to uh, allow you to transfer data between different bits without copying anything. Um, so we have a complete mechanism for negotiations, not only of the format, but also of the properties of the memory, of the alignment, uh, maybe even of the type of memory, if you have more than one type of memory in your device. Um, there is a reference counting based system to handle the buffer lifetime. We have buffer pooling to not reallocate buffers. There's a whole, the whole system to make it relatively easy to work with uh, devices that have hardware constraints. And it includes s synchronization. So the framework does a synchronization between the, the different parts so that you can have the right timing. And we have a pretty big load and load and loads of hardware enabled plugins for almost any embedded hardware these days. And this means that it's really easy to build a, a system. And using GST launch, 
the command line tool, it's really easy to do a, a prototype of, of the pipeline you want to process. And even something a bit more complicated, it's very trivial to do in Python, for example, where, where we have bindings that are really simple. So I'm going to give a, a quick example of one project where we wanted to put GStreamer on a very simple device. This device is a security camera. Um, it's pretty small. It has 16 megs of flash, although it has one gig of RAM. And there's an RTSP server, and it's an ARM v7, so it's a kind of very standard device. There's so much RAM because they actually keep a ring buffer of, of, of video in the RAM. Um, so the pipeline on this device is quite simple, the pipeline we want to implement. We want to capture, from this RTSP server, we can live, get a live feed from the camera. We want to capture it in clips of two seconds to upload them to Amazon S3. So to capture them, we, do, we have an RTSP source element, which reads from the RTSP server locally. We depayload the H.264, we parse it, and then we send it to split mock sync, which will wrap it into MP4 files, and then we have MP4 files we can upload. So it's very simple. So on PC, we did a very quick prototype, a simple JSC launch line. It took me 30 seconds, and I had something that worked. So I thought, all right, it's going to be an easy project. So I thought then, well, maybe I can do the same thing on, on my device. So to do a, the same thing on the device, I write a very simple shell script that just did the previous command. Uh, the problem that the whole GStreamer build, it's 287 megabytes, so that wouldn't fit. Uh, 82 megabytes of these are dynamic libraries, not plugins. So that's, like the first version is just to strip it, right? You just strip the libraries. And then it brings it down to 17 megabytes, which is more acceptable, but still doesn't fit. Next version is replace GST launch by a small C program, which I've put here, but it's basically just a GST launch in a little C. There's almost nothing in there. Um, and a little make file to build this. So some for sure the tool chain, but it is basically just setting the right tool chain and the package config path and linking it with lib2. There's almost, almost nothing there. So, a C program. The binary, compile it to 13K, strip it to 5K. Like, oh, that's minuscule. It's amazing. Plus 17 megs in libraries. All right, that still doesn't fit. So yeah, all right. Solution, make a static build. So we only build in the parts of the libraries that we're actually using and not the parts that we're not using. So using libtool, Use lib tool, static lib tool libs. That's a, a kind of a trick to um, make it compile statically only the parts that have LA files and not the parts that don't. So, and then if the, the, the sys root from the device has LA files, you can just delete them or remove them. And my Cerbero, which is a, a bit like Yocto, but to build an SDK for GStreamer. So, this actually generates LA files. So Using this, I can statically link the bits from this room, but not the bits from the device. And uh, then I get a binary that's uh, 7.5 megs. Stripped 1.5 megs. All right, that's still pretty good. It's gonna work. Then I try it on the device. I put it on the flash, I run it. Damn it, I get an error. The plugin's not there. So, oof, that's not, that's not good. We need to copy the plugins. And I'm uh, missing all the plugins. So then, I copy all the plugins, all of them 17 megs, and I'm gonna fit. So I use um, this command when I run it on the PC that tells me exactly which plugins it loaded. So then I know which files to copy. I can copy all of these files. Um, so that adds 1.7 megabytes. So then I turn on the device again. Oh, why do the plugins not load? Yeah, because they depend on the libraries. So the plugins are not static, it doesn't work. I'm back to re-adding my 17 megabytes. Still, still not good enough. So next, we uh, have to statically link all the plugins so that we can stack link in the library and have a, build, a nice static build with everything needed. So I'm missing any bits. So in GStreamer, to statically link plugins, first we have to uh, declare the function, one function per plugin using the first macro in, in the C file, 
And then just after GST init, we call the second macro, which registers the plugins. So this is only done for static plugins because for dynamic ones, uh, GST init will actually iterate the files and uh, uh, register them for you. But since they're not in separate files, we have to do it statically. And then we link with uh, minus big L towards the path where the plugins are. And we have to manually link in each one, each library separately because there's nothing to actually guess them in this case. So, static build, 28 megabytes, stripped down to five. That, that works on a device, that actually works, but it's, it's still big, right? It's five megabytes, we could do less. So now, we have the compiler for help. Uh, compile with OS, because this is supposed to make smaller binaries. And uh, it doesn't do anything. Like, the improvement was marginal. Um, so, well, too bad. Next step is to strip all the functions that are not needed, because in there, we have a lot of crap that we're not using. This includes the whole of glib, for example. There's a lot of functions that are never called, so uh, we can build everything, the whole GStream SDK, with uh, F function sections, F data sections, that will make it create one object file, one .o file, for each function and each data object, which means that we can link exactly the ones we need and none that are not used. Um, and then uh, we link, on uh, linking, we, we pass this argument to the linker, and that will make it re remove all of the uh, objects that are not actually called anywhere. So that brings it down to four megabytes, which is pretty good. Next, we're wondering how can I make it even smaller? So um, we, we basically want to find which .o files contribute to the size. Let's think. Um, so we want to, what I had done, what I, when I did this project was to take the, the output of the linker, read it with object dump, using the debug symbols, find what's in there, and then find that the old files and look at their size, wrote a little Python script, and then to know which, which of these symbols actually take space and where I can focus my optimization, maybe remove some steps from the pipeline, maybe some do something clever, maybe something, do something really nasty. Um, then I realized there's a tool called the Blow Team Make Bloat Face from some guys at Google that is basically the definition of bloat. It's a couple thousands of lines of C++ code, and when you do make, it downloads like 300 megs of stuff, and protoboff and everything. Then I download the entire Google intranet. But once you've downloaded this 300 megabyte thing and you spend like half an hour compiling it, you have this tool that in many cases works and gives you exactly which symbols take space in your binaries. Right? It's, it's quite convenient. Um, Doing that, I find out that glib is big. And um, glib has a bunch of bits that don't get removed when you do a static compilation ever or you don't use them. Um, two things that I really found out. Uh, first, glib has internal plugins that are called GIO extension points that are always registered at the, when glib starts. And these, so it means that they actually call the functions which have references to basically every function in the extension point, which means that they, even though you never call them, they get linked in. So I did a little, well, very nasty patch to actually just remove the, all of these that, that I don't care. Uh, I removed G settings, GD bus, G app info, applications, notification, all, all these things I don't care about, right? This, these are not used in this case. Uh, so that, that, that strips it down to 3.8 megabytes. Um, the other area that I would really like to remove is all of the UTF-8 stuff for this kind of use case because there are giant tables that take like over a megabyte and that don't compress well. Um, and then that's basically all I could get to in the allocated time. So it wasn't still fitting in the, in the disk. And remember, this is a special device because there's not so much disk, but there's a lot of RAM. So you just compress the binary, <laughs> use UPX, very nice little tool, open source, compresses down to two megabytes, Whew, it fits, I'm happy. 
And uh, this was uh, basically how we got two streamer from 300 megs to two megs for our use case. And this is shipping in probably hundreds of thousands of security cameras that uh, you buy from some uh, Tesco or something. Um, what more steps could make it even smaller? So I mentioned the UTF-8 tables in GLib. I would really like to remove them somehow, at least for this kind of use case. And then with the, the various tools, we can actually probably dig down. I'm pretty sure there's a couple more that can be extracted out and made smaller or removed. There's a bunch of things we're not really using. So this is basically all the, the key steps we took to make this more fit in our tiny, tiny project. Um, so, conclusion, GStreamer is not just for the desktop. Uh, we know it's used in a bunch of big embedded devices. If you saw my earlier talk today, I mentioned it's used in space, it's used in, in airplanes, entertainment systems, it's used in cars, it's used in TVs, it's used in center boxes. I mean, embedded devices that do video, it's pretty likely to use GStreamer these days, somehow. But it's not only for these, I would call, bigger embedded devices. It's even usable in the kind of smaller ones where you don't have so much, uh, so much space. Um, so basically, that's uh, that's a core of my message. Any questions? Yes. Why did the cameras have so little flash? Why did you have no flash? Um, because these devices cost 30 euros. At, uh, at Costco? Yes, but they, the, the reason they have so much RAM is that they have a feature that requires it. They store all the video in the RAM so that you can uh, uh, survive, uh, so that you can get the video from, the, from back in time. So they don't always record. They, when they have like some image analysis in it, and when something happens, they will record the previous X minutes of, 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 of video. Because the, the image analysis is not very good. So, so, so if something happens, they say, here's the video from the last two minutes, because this is the burglar entering, and then he's walking in around the house for two minutes, and then we re realize that, he was, that there was something in the house. That's, that's why. It's surprisingly common in these devices, it's Chinese devices. <laughs> Any other question? Can you speak louder? Sorry. No, sadly. Um, so, sorry, yes. Uh, the question is, is there any single flags to use to eliminate the, the desktop dependencies? Sadly, there isn't, but uh, the, the horrible patch I made is available there. Uh, and uh, these slides will be on the FOSDEM website as soon as I get enough internet to upload them. Yes. Would it be an option to just make a kind of a fork of GLib that only has the functionality you really need instead of just using it, instead of just butchering GLib? So, so the question is, would it make sense to just have a fork of GLib that would have only needed things for GStreamer? Uh, I don't want to fork GLib. I don't think anyone wants to fork GLib. Uh, and the GLib maintainers are quite reasonable, so I'm sure if we had some patches to do, do this cleanly, they would take them. But also, these aren't, I removed functionalities that are used by other bits of GStreamer. So I really focus on the functionalities that are only used by this very specific pipeline for this device. So th this is why, for example, uh, uh, I don't know what, G application or things like that might be used somewhere else in GStreamer. Uh, uh, there might be even stuff that uses Dbus. Because there's a bunch of plugins, right, that do things. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm, I'm still planning to write a debus sync, for example. And any other question? No. Well, thank you very much. And I guess have a good evening. Good dinner. <laughs>
Oh yeah, and I forgot, Collaborize Hiring, we have a bunch of job postings on the career boards on our website called LA careers and we're looking for people in all kinds of domains. Thank you.